Hello everybody, Happy New Year. This is Jason Robinson, I'm the CEO of Solar Buzz Jamaica and we know that your JPS bills are at an all-time high because you keep sending them to us for a solution. So what we're gonna start doing is answering your questions in more YouTube videos. So please subscribe to the channel so you can be aware of energy saving tips through uh, products that we will advise you on and also through solar energy. Questions that you leave in the comments that we feature in these videos will give you the chance to be eligible to win a prize. So thank you. We look forward to helping you reduce your JPS bill at your home and your business. And we look forward to the questions that you'll be posting. From our last video, we had a really good question from Joan Henry Forrester. Uh, she asked, can you gradually remove appliances and place them on solar panels or do you have to switch over everything all at once? Example, could you remove the water heater from JPS and put it on solar, then gradually add washing machines, water pumps, etc.? Joan, excellent question. It's a question we get all the time. Yes, you can. What that would entail would be we would have to pull the circuits that you want to start out on solar as a partial system and put them into a sub panel. And that panel now would be powered by solar. So your main panel in the house would still be running on JPS, but only the circuits that we move out of the main breaker panel into the sub panel could then be powered by solar energy. In your example, you mentioned moving an electric water heater onto a solar system. We would more advise that you get rid of the electric water heater altogether and just put in a solar water heater. It will cost you much less. You would spend much more on having to buy a bigger solar system to accommodate an electric water heater because it uses so much power than just eliminating the electric water heater altogether and putting, putting in a solar water heater. We think a solar water heater is most likely the best place to start for most homes when you eliminate these high electric uh, appliances that use a lot of energy. And Joan, having said all that, what we normally recommend is that instead of pulling circuits out of a main panel and putting it in a sub panel, more than likely um, it is better just to have a partial system feeding into that main breaker panel. And this is usually uh, assessed in the, in the solar audit. But why I say that is that if you wanted to run certain appliances on solar that are put into a sub panel, such as an air conditioning, um, a water pump, or something that is on infrequently, you're not going to benefit from the solar system when those appliances are off. So by feeding the solar system, even if it's a partial system, into your main breaker panel, even when those appliances that you're most, most concerned about, being high energy users, when they're off, like the AC because it's not on during the day if, if you're at work, the solar system will still be feeding into the main breaker panel and it will be offsetting your fridge, your microwave, anything else that is turned on while those major appliances are off. Then when the major appliances are turned on, that system will also offset uh, those appliances until the battery storage storage runs out and when that battery storage runs out because it's a partial system and it's getting heavy usage the system will then automatically just switch to JPS so you will still get a JPS bill just like you would have in the first scenario when you have a partial system and a sub panel but your bill is dramatically reduced what we see happen is that you will learn to maximize a partial system the more you utilize the online monitoring uh, that comes with a solar system so you can see what's coming in from JPS, you can see what the house is using, and you can see how much battery storage is in your battery. Now our clients who use online monitoring the most end up reducing their JPS bills the most. We have clients that have put in partial systems that really should have only offset their JPS bill 60 or 70%, but end up offsetting their bills 90 to 95% because they're always looking on the online monitoring and they know when to turn things on and off, when it's a cloudy day, how to not use heavy appliances in the home, such as irons, etc. how much battery storage they have on those cloudier days that they need to save for the nighttime. So once you utilize online monitoring, you'll also save more and maximize a partial system, which ends up saving you more so that you can eventually put in a system that offsets 100% of your JPS power. Joan, thank you for the question. For sending that in, we're going to send you a solar flashlight from Hybrid Light that can be charged by the sun, it can be charged by a USB cable, and it's also a power bank to charge your cell phone. So thank you very much, Joan, and please everyone else, leave your questions in the comments below so you can be eligible to win prizes from us, and then we can also help you to reduce your, your energy costs along the way. Thank you very much from myself and the Solar Buzz team.